Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Packer Universe Podcast. We're a Green Bay Packers fan podcast bringing you topical and relevant Packers news along with their most humble, subjective opinions. This is episode 279. We're recording this on a Monday, July 22nd, 2024. This is our day one training camp report. We're going to recap our day and adventure up at Lambeau Field and in the Titletown area where we took in the Packers' first practice in their training camp this year, uh, along with the shareholders meeting. This is a video episode, so if you are listening to the podcast form uh, and you're interested in seeing our faces and our mugs, try heading over to our YouTube channel and check out this show's video. I'm your host, Tay, and joining me as always is... Ooh, uh, Ren, what up, Tay? Ren. Happy Monday. I mean, it can't get much better on a Monday, Tay, than the opening day at training camp. All the guys were there, even Jordan Love, who uh, not holding out, but holding in, I think, is the big start <laughs> of our day as we sit in the bleachers for a good hour, 20 minutes before this thing kicks off and we start hearing yeah. a little chatter. Uh, we were in, obviously, uh, the practice facility and you know, we know we're missing the Gutekunst slash slight little bit Matt LaFleur presser to yep. open. Yep. And then both, both. we do get the news floating through the uh, the metal benches there that Jordan Love is not going to practice. What, like, so I can tell you what Jordan my first Love, reaction we was. Had, oh, we yeah. You, we had I, don't, Jordan Love. I didn't grab Jordan Love because I wanted someone that was going to be on the team this year. I took Romeo Dobbs. <laughs> so, hey, me, Jordan's me and Rome. Be on the team this year. Uh, what did he miss? A non padded opening day practice. Yeah. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, it was still a great time to be there. Amazing weather day. Uh, we saw some neat things. We were once again in the south end zone where we tend to be. This thing, I mean, on our way up, we were going to still arrive about an hour and a half early prior to start. And it was what? Three quarters full, Tang, when we got there. Yeah. And yeah. so we still had to uh, go bury ourselves at the south end zone, which typically the number one unit does not like to hang out in. Um, no. I, I found it a little bit serendipitous that we ended up there because we opened with the start of the Jeff Halfley uh, defensive coordinator administration on the south end zone, which is typically where they go. And we saw some really interesting new takes on some of these defensive you know pieces that they're going to run as far as practice is concerned you know we saw edge rush drills that included all your edge rushers and your interior defense alignment coming from edges we saw that also kind of reversed from the interior with your interior lineman rushing inside along with uh preston smith and rashawn gary not including the interior rush piece was uh J.J. Anikbari and Lucas Van Ness. So we got to kind of kind of just open that way. It was kind of just ho-hum and not a lot going on, but it was kind of fun to see some of those different drills they were running back there. Uh, we saw some quarterback hands-up drills where, you know, they've got five guys out there and they'll drop back Pratt, for example, and then one of the guys will decide to throw their hands up, and that's where the football should go when it came to mm -hmm. offense. And we saw red zone drills. And obviously, once again, we get the second team. First team would have been the big red dog on the other side today, not Jordan Love. And that was Michael Pratt, two for six in red zone opportunities the first time around and three for six the second time around. So nothing to blow your mind with Pratt getting it done. There, were, there was, The defense was chirping hard, Tay, at Pratt during his sessions <laughs> to the point where there were some balls knocked down to the line of scrimmage. Um, they were just pushing them out of the pocket, throwing balls, you know, kind of errant down the sideline. Uh, but it was fun. There was yeah, an interception. There's there an INC by Anthony Johnson Jr. Junior. Um, yeah, there's a, it was it was fun being down there, just kind of you know live tweeting some of that stuff we saw in the south end zone, which not everybody gets to see because again, a lot of the action happens kind of more that north end zone with the first team guys. We got what do we get the the wide receivers today? Uh, Christian Romeo and, and company and, and Reed, Reed, Reed was throwing. Who's, who's, Reed was kind of participating in it a little bit. He was participating, he was on the pup list, even but... though he's on the pup list. He was pupped yesterday, uh, but yeah, he was he was there with his boys, and uh, we learned that 
Romeo Dobbs is a southpaw today. He's he's a left-hander whipping balls yeah. back. I don't think yeah. much of the universe had any idea that Romeo Dobbs may be a trick play master, you know, on a fake end around this year. Strange. Left-hander hits it deep. I don't know. I'm just saying, Tay. I mean, maybe he's ambidextrous. I mean, it's possible. I mean, he's really good, right? At, at a, a lot of a lot of things. And um, but yeah, we did see him throw with the left hand back to Jordan or Jordan Reed, uh, Jaden Reed, who uh, was involved in those uh, two. And so you had you kind of had your your top three wide receivers in one little grouping we were watching for a little while. That was that was cool. Um, but yeah, we when we were in the we were in the southern part of practice field and we saw uh, a lot of the defensive action um but i yeah i wanted to kind of uh, double up on what you were saying um halfway was down there and we were i was kind of paying attention to where halfway was uh and he was bouncing around to all the defensive different positions and, and you know taking care of business but for a lot of it most of that practice was drills and evidently you kind of mentioned this to me uh, that you heard that um, a lot of these drills, defensive drills from the halfway system were new. And like, so they were doing these, these drills and you, you could see, um, I think it was the, 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 the assistant offensive or sorry, defensive line coach was taking Kenny Clark, you know, Kenny, you're the vet here. You're going to be my guy. Yeah. Jason Reverovich. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It was, uh, it was like, he was using Kenny to like, okay, this is what we're going to do now. Here, here's the drill. I need someone, Kenny, you're it. You're going to show these guys what to do, what I mean. Uh, and then they went through it and we saw that all over the place, uh, these different drills being done. And, and to know that it was like different and new to these guys was interesting because we were seeing it firsthand. Um, and they're, you know, they're practicing in front of an audience and that's different for a lot of players, especially new guys. Uh, so that was interesting to see. Uh, we, yeah, we saw some of that, uh, you know, some of the edge rushers doing stuff with the defensive line. So that was interesting. Um, but yeah, and again, vice versa, you got those, those interior D line guys doing kind of hit it from the edge and they're doing rush moves from the interior. Um, it was, it was definitely, um, an interesting way to try to clearly make this first goal, maybe up front in the Halfley system is what kind of, I noticed like these, yeah. these, some of these edge guys typically called an edge now, obviously moving to, that four three um, are going to be interchangeable in that mix and where they may set them out up throughout the course of the year in different play packages that Halfley wants to obviously implement. So uh, mm -hmm. that, that definitely stood out to me on the South end zone today. Yeah, it was, uh, it was well organized again. Um, you didn't have that. I noticed they didn't have the yeller as I call it, like the rich, rich Passaccia on the loudspeaker, just like blaring things. And maybe, maybe that'll happen later. Maybe as they get into it, they need some sort of like, you know, practice coordinator. Um, but you didn't see the, 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 I guess over the PA, sometimes you get a coach that's just like barking orders and getting people rallied and corralling them. Uh, I didn't see that, uh, but maybe that will evolve and that, that'll take shape. But um, uh, th this was no pads, right? So they're just in jerseys and in helmets. Um, there was, you know, minimal contact have, as much. They didn't have pants on today. They, you know, yeah. Just, just, just to paint the just, picture there. No, not just, yeah. you know, they didn't just shirts have shirts and helmets today. All right. <laughs> Uh, and so that kind of goes back to you know let's talk about jordan again like we learned you know while we were sitting there on those benches that he wasn't going to play and um i don't know i, I guess at first i, I was kind of like really like this is what we're doing i didn't think it was going to come to this i didn't think he was going to do it um you know but a lot of people are pointing to well it's just you're still not in pads it's not a big deal and this puts pressure on the packers but at the same time you see we saw Brian Gutekunz come up to Jordan Love during practice, uh, kind of give like a little like fist bump, arm bump, and they're like, hey, you know, chumming it up a little bit. We check, go check our Twitter feed out. Uh, we, we were posting some of that, and so you're you're like, is that fake or is that real? You you want to think it's normal and real, um, yeah. but you got you got uh, you know Mark the Medler Murphy walk on the sidelines. Uh, Coach Lafleur is next to Jordan a lot of the time. So he's there, he's participating. He's just not practicing. So is it a big deal? Not really. You, 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 could, you could argue that he's missing time. He's missing reps, but again, that everyone points to, this is no pads practice. They're doing drills. Do, do you really need him to do stuff? And how much would he be doing anyway? So I don't know. It's I'm kind of 
torn between those two worlds, Ren, and I wanted to get your opinion on it because I, I don't want Jordan to be that guy that that holds out. Like I just I don't think that's healthy. If if it, if this goes into uh, what preseason games, like how can that be? You're, you're talking like tomorrow or Wednesday, and, and I don't care. But if this goes into next week and stuff, I'm I'm thinking I don't I don't like this. I'm questioning Jordan's decision, maybe his agent's decision to do this because is he that great? He's going to hold out now, you know, like seriously. And he still needs to prove something to this team, to the fans. That's I think where it comes in for me to go. "Uh, I don't think this is such a good look, but what do you think about this? Where, where do you lie on this? I, again, say week, week one. I mean, how many snaps did Jordan love miss today? And you know what you could, kind of right off is almost an OTA style practice. You know, it was yeah. a shortened practice, wasn't even quite an hour and a half. Um, you know, he's out there with the guys. He's in in the film rooms. He's doing the things. He's on the field. It's not like, again, a holdout is he's not at the facility. He's there doing everything but, and at this point he's missed one practice. So at this point it means nothing. I would say if it got to like family night, that might be like, because, you know, all those fans and Mark at the owner's uh, meeting today will get into a little bit of our anecdotes from that. Did mention that thing is sold out. It hasn't sold out the last few years, to my knowledge. Um, so now that it is, um, I would hope they'd get, you know, the fans that want to take their kids there and want to see that thing. That's what I'd have a problem with it, only because, you know, a lot of them are there to see Jordan. They're not there to watch Clifford the Big Red Dog and, and Mr. Tulane, Michael Pratt you know, come out and play quarterback. Not that they're not fun to watch and they'll do some fun things there on family night as well. But I know they're there to see, you know, the next, you know, franchise quarterback in the Packers since Jordan Love. But, you know, this is agent speak stuff, Tay. And it seems like it's pretty close. It's got to be, you know, big breaking news yesterday. The contract we didn't expect necessarily to hear that was happening yeah. was, again, Kenny Clark. And per most people on the beat and talking Packer football, you know, if they got the Kenny stuff figured out, the Jordan love stuff has to be pretty close because one doesn't happen without the other, where they know they're moving monies. Um, obviously three year 64, is it Tay? three sixty four, And what we, the rest we know is 29 up front in a signing bonus. Yeah. It's a lot of money, a lot of quiche as they say, Tay, but I mean, that's, half the contract right there essentially so you have to figure the outs are pretty easy down the road um but hey they got another great guy who's essentially almost been on the roster a decade not even 30 yet uh, under wraps and you know he was used more last year as a rusher i think he had seven and a half sacks last year today um still super productive um the consummate pro you've heard brian talk about him today um he wishes all guys could kind of be the leader and the the kind of hard worker that Kenny Clark is. He threw uh, Preston Smith a bone like that at uh, um, the owners' meeting as well. Just those guys that don't miss time and they're there, leading by example. Uh, so we're really grateful and happy for Kenny getting that deal. But the Jordan stuff, Tay, has got to be pretty darn close. And an anecdote from you know the owners' meeting that we attended later in the afternoon after we were sun baked in the stands was Brian Gutekunst up there saying or trying to say the word diligently um, gave it a few tries until it came out um, and that they're diligently working on that contract extension with Jordan Love. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. all signs point to not too long to wait. Yeah. And congratulations, Kenny. It's well-deserved. I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he's here to stay. Um, this is the third contract, which the Packers don't tend to do. So you'd like to see that. Uh, because then you, you, it renews faith in the Packers that they like their some of their guys and they don't want them to stick around. He's a corner piece, uh, and it's well deserved on his end. Big time. Um, one one and of the so, best interior defense line in the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, you're right. These two don't happen separately. They're not like oh, because Kenny got his, Jordan's not getting his. These these were working in tandem. There, everything's played out so like that it all can be done at the same time uh and all included so i have no doubt that um this is not going to get in any way uh jordan loves done but uh we were sitting there in practice and fan off of the street yells a bunch of times while jordan was down by us um you know sign that contract sign that contract 
and this is this is his reaction to it. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. That wasn't to a play. That wasn't to anybody else, but that was to that guy that yelled that out. So I think uh, I think him just being there, being in good spirits and stuff, um, and s- seemingly everyone else was too about it. I think I heard that they uh, Jordan and his agent told the team on Saturday he wasn't he was going to hold out or, or not attend hold in. and play hold in. Uh, so they knew it a couple days in advance. And also Brian was like, well, this is expected. So he's coming. Brian's coming out and saying this is expected. So uh, he's like, it's not a big deal. No problem. We're, we're working on this. And all, all signs were that way. I, and I, if this could go anyway, this is the way it should go. Like with this hold in is yeah. like positivity, uh, encouragement all around, even from the team and the agent and the player. Uh, you don't want anything like animosity building up or bad blood developing now at this crucial point. So everything seems fine. Trust me. And uh, I think that's re- a really, really good sign that things will get done soon and we'll be able to, you know, just get back at it. So uh, I don't know. Where d- Did you lose your Jordan love uh, card here, Ren, or uh, do you have to go back another time to pick up one? It is down in my boy's room with his also his Romeo Dobbs you know, a little face blacker there. So um, I can't, it's not a finger's reach. I could leave this uh, <laughs> podcast that we're doing no, no, live no, here and go no, grab no, it. No, no, um, no, no. But yeah, no, I mean, that was the closest we're going to get to Jordan today as far as uh, seeing him was the placard and in that, yeah. that respect, but no, he was out there and it's fine. Tay. I don't, I don't see any problem with it. And we were all kind of, you know, ready for that. I mean, three, four weeks ago, that was kind of the talking point is Jordan going to practice he doesn't have a deal done. And the rumor was, no, he wasn't. So it's not like this is some, you know, breaking news. The question was, was he going to hold out to the point where he's not there? And he's yeah. not doing that. And yeah. and again, right. based on him being, you know, there with the guys and doing all the rest of the stuff other than being on the practice field, it tells you all you need to know about the guy and all you need to know about the situation. I don't, I, if this thing goes into next week, some time i'd be surprised yeah yeah uh staying on quarterbacks so pratt the rookie was down on our end quite a bit and you were talking about him earlier um but what like you had him picked as the start uh sorry it's not the starter but qb2 over sean clifford the big red dog so after watching pratt today you, what do you think what do you think of this guy are you still excited or is this like, holy crap, this is the first day? I mean, it was day one, but he was – the defense, again, they were loud. They were chirping. I don't know if that was encouraged by the you know the D coordinator, Halfley, but they were mixing it up. He changed the play at the line in each session. You know, one session I think he did it once. The other session two, I think he did it twice when he canned and changed out of it. Uh Granted, session two, he was more successful with three to six rather than session one, two to six. But he was rattled at times today. He was not throwing a great ball. Um, he got that one just stuffed at the line of scrimmage, you know, as far mm-hmm. as knocked down. And uh, another one he's just pushed, I think, in session two, uh, rolls out to his right, just pushed way outside and can't do anything, you know, downfield 15 yards and doesn't look good. Uh, but that, that's what you expect as a rook. I mean, you know, day one, and and they weren't they weren't holding back on him with some of the, the change ups and the looks. It looks like a little offsides there on this one. Maybe um, could have called that flag. They don't have any refs in there to call it today. But yeah, he was not crisp. Um, there there was, I think his two <laughs> nicest balls went to Grant Bose, um, mm-hmm. one in yeah. each session for touchdowns. On one of which you pointed out um, the. The little uh, safety hat they wear. The I forget the name. Or what they yeah, what they call I do that too. Thing. It's the little Ghost. mushroom cap. Here, it, it's yeah. at the end of this play here. Guard, I'll, I'll play guardian, this again. The, the guardian, guardian hat cap. Hat. Is it in this play? Yeah, it's is, at the end the, of this the, play. One of the Debo's. Yeah, watch him hit the ground. Here. His face go. mask goes in. Bam. It, okay, it, this is yeah, an incomplete it, pass. It goes down it and it goes up into his face. Yeah. So. It wasn't much of a guardian than that one. Looks like maybe he uh, ends up with a like, bloody mouth on that thing, Tay. He was definitely wiping his face. So yeah. maybe the guy got that thing figured out. Make sure it 
you know, clips on. I'm not, I'm not sure how that thing uh, operates. All right. Yeah. So, um, you know, training camp, Day one was great. I, I enjoyed it. I got to see some players. Um, obviously, it was no pads, so it was a uh, you know pretty run of the mill drill session, uh, glorified OTA, like you kind of mentioned. Uh, it was hot. I thought um, it got even hotter as we transitioned to late afternoon. Um, but we uh, we went to a local establishment, which you've brought up on the podcast before. We went to the the Drift Inn down the road uh, for a little uh, greasy Wisconsin food. That was great. Um, oh, killer burger today. Yep. Um, that is a, that is a joint for a burger. If people in in the Green Bay area know, and, and they know, because that place is was not not filled. And yeah. it was some some training camp folks and others just like, yep. hey, it's it's Monday afternoon at the Drift Inn and it's packed. So we headed to headed back to the the stadium. Went in the in the pro shop. Uh, it was crazy. Tons, tons of tons of people there uh, viewed the clock, Ren, the countdown clock to 2025 draft. Uh, that's the there. Countdown um, clock. Yep, yeah, so that was Mark, interesting. Mark so, the meddler is very, very proud of his countdown clock, as we heard yeah, at the yeah. owners' meeting. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we we did that, and then we um, bounced out to the uh, the stadium, and uh, I got a little picture of here, uh, a couple of pictures actually. Uh, but we, you know, they had the stage there faced east, and of course they're in the they're in the uh, shadows of that thing. But the 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 fans, we we were uh, man, we were in there. Uh, it was hot, really really hot. So I think uh, you know, apart from my uh, my heat exhaustion today, Ren, it's like it was pretty fun. But um, yeah, they, you know, we we transitioned into the the shareholder meeting. We we watched um, the dignitaries. I mean the the the, uh, the council there come out um, and they were all in suits, which was interesting. I bet you that was even hotter than us sitting there. Uh, but you had Brian Gutekunst, you had Mark the Meddler Murphy, you had, uh, well, of course, Ed Policy, right? He was there too in the background. Uh, so we had Ed, a lot Ed of the was, guys Ed, up there. Ed's there looking like a uh, Secret Service agent oh, in the back. He was. Looking, looking yeah. dapper with the sunglasses, looking around like, Who's watching me? Yeah, but yeah, in the back row. Yeah, Ed was there as well, amongst you know a lot of those other board members. I mean, Tay, we got to hear about you know the secretary's cure worm report. I mean, you know, it's a good day when you got cure worm reports going, and yeah. and you know Daniel Aaron's is reading those back to you, and you're like, we're in good standing. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. how how can you not feel good about attending an owners meeting and knowing you got to hear the cure worm report and the status of said report? That's all so a lot of that was a lot of that was uh just a lot of like okay but it was interesting to see um Brian kind of he went through every position and kind of gave us an update on those positions and who was here that was new uh, that some is of the, the coaching staff report, changes that is, it's the that football is... report uh, and that that's where things came in you know about like a little bit about uh Jordan Love you know it's like oh, where he said diligently diligently and he he's, he's he was back. trying to spit that word out and it was a little well, he was a little tongue tied, but yes, he inevitably got a we are diligently, quote unquote, working on an extension for Jordan. Love. So when when uh, when Brian was done, he he left. He like walked off the stage and we were like, OK, cool. He was like, oh, he, he's he's walking away. And then, of course, Mark gets back up on on the podium and he's like, uh, well, Brian's leaving. But uh, don't worry, he's he's not leaving the building. He's He's got to get back to work. And it was like. Okay, no one else left. Like, he must be a busy, busy man. He can't stay for the rest of that. So, uh, that I don't was know. There, there's 10 reasons uh, <laughs> or more that he had, uh, he had some work to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the owner's meeting is fun. Uh, we, I got a couple merch things. I think I got a new cup. You can't really see it back here, but, uh, got a new glass. Actually, that's kind of funny. What if you drop that right now? How would that? No, no, no. I got. I have the old one that I got. Oh, you got twins here. And now I got the new one. So all right, very nice. Very nice. They do not have cocktail. They do not have cocktail tumblers this time, say, which is a little disappointed. I have to say, like putting all the the shareholder merch in the pro shop was a complete cluster. You know what? Yeah. It was complete madness and bedlam in there. You didn't know how to handle it. Um, 
you know, I've been in concerts with 10,000 people that felt like I was around less people <laughs> than, uh, than that, that uh, whole experience in, uh, you know, the pro shop. So I don't know, maybe put it back up in the atrium for the shareholders. Just a bit of advice on that one. Uh, uh, Green Bay Packers folks. I'm going to break your heart a little bit. I saw the tumblers. They were r- right down the table from where I got my cup. So, or my, my pint glass. Oh. So see, but I, was that well organized there? Was it evidently well not? Cause you missed it. Um, I think there were <laughs> more not. etched glass. Yeah. It was more etched. They yeah. had an etched pint glass too. I think it was like whatever etched glass. Uh, anyway, so there was lots of stuff there. I could have been fired um, far take because I did end up with a pint glass myself. But oh. my, my young guy did get the owner cheese head because my dog ate his regular cheese head this year. So a little bit of an upgrade <laughs> on that one. Nice. Yeah, it has the owner in the back. That's beautiful, right. beautiful rhyme. He, he was quite uh, proud of said uh, procurement. Yeah. So, um, you know, all signs point to this Packers team is still – exciting to get excited about um they're doing great i think there were no injuries i think well jordan Jar- jordan i keep calling him jordan jaden reed got put on the pup list yesterday i think it was hip was it no no that was marshawn lloyd marshawn lloyd was hip, was on hip uh, for lloyd. Hip. so, so I, was that was disappointing to see yeah he, he just was sitting there with no helmet and we were like i could see him next to he was kind of next to jordan um so I was a little disappointed in not seeing uh, Marshawn Lloyd out there, you know. Uh, so hopefully that's minimal and he can get back out there. Um, but, you know, not a lot of other injuries to go around, which is great. Obviously, it wasn't contact. It wasn't, you know, in pads. So you saw the, uh, you saw the down on our end, we had that one strip takeaway. I think uh, Valentine overplayed it. I don't think he had to do that. The whistles are already blown and he literally runs down Emmanuel Wilson and strips the ball and takes it away runs back the other way. Everybody cheered it. But yeah, I mean, there's not any contact going on without the pads. I think Valentine definitely uh, over pursued that one and, and made a little play at the uh, behest of, <laughs> of Emmanuel. Wilson. Wow. And it happened to be just in front of Brian Gutekunst too. Uh, I wonder if that wasn't intentional, but that, that that's how he is. That's how uh, uh, Valentine does things. He's a little, little spitfire, I think. So yeah. Yeah. It was a it was a good time run. I think uh, I don't know if we'll get back this year to be in person, but uh, I would love to try. And uh, I know there's some there's one joint practice at the end of training camp. Um, I think that's the Ravens. Right around, I want to say that is the 22nd or 21st of yeah. August. Yeah. Yeah. So I know we, we have got another like one a... circled on the calendar in August. I believe a Tuesday. We'll see if that comes to fruition. I believe it will. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, any other takeaways from the owners meeting i know i have one big one and that was drag anybody that could drag the dallas cowboys they had mark <laughs> and brian in company yeah, cool. really uh mark's big piece you know how jerry jones always talked about how about them cowboys yeah how about we beat them cowboys and then they played us highlights <laughs> it was uh it was pretty funny yeah. um you had to love that because it was it was not just on one occasion that the Cowboys were dragged by Packer, uh, you know, front office personnel in the owners' meeting. It was yeah, because he because he, he'd be like uh, Murphy would be like, yeah, we were the youngest team to win a win a playoff game or whatever, it, it, beating the uh, beating the the Cowboys, of course. And then he get cheers, and then he was saying something like, first you know, seventh seed to win a playoff game against the Cowboys. He, he was, he's rubbing it in. So, uh, oh, and I think Brian, that. Brian also brought up the Cowboys win and <laughs> rubbed that one in. So Brian and Mark were working there, you know, Hey, we're green Bay. It even talked about the littlest team and, you know, beating them Cowboys. It was, uh, yeah, they, they were going to that well early and often throughout the, uh, the owner's meeting. Uh, Ren, we, have some new shirts i mean tell the audience here we got we got packer universe shirts in our cameras are mine is in real light, color taze and i don't know what kind like of light yellow color color yeah it's more more gold or whatever like uh but yeah there's a little uh impression on the back but i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna be either really irresponsible and be stupid with this or this is gonna i'm gonna knock it out of the park right now ren but i'm going to 
pick the first person that emails us info at packeruniverse.com going to send you mail you a t-shirt so write down your name your address and your size we have i'll say large xl and 2xl too uh you send us an email i will send you a shirt i'm saying that right now first person that 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 does that i'll be checking it tonight i'll be checking it tomorrow until i get that person i'll tweet it out once we once we have that person uh that we've had it selected but um uh, I'm doing it, Ren. I'm doing it. You think I'm making a big mistake? No, I think you're good. I mean, I already got one. Otherwise, I'd be on all over that day. Uh, no, yeah. F- family and friends, part of the Packer Universe podcast, are not eligible for free T-shirts. <laughs> yeah, I paid for mine, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ren. Well, I don't, I don't have too much more. This was great. I loved it. Um, I wish I could do it more. I was jealous of the guy next to me that uh, is retired. He bought a house near Lambo. He's going to be walking over there every day to practice, uh, to watch this. Uh, he, you know, so I, I just, I love that. I wish I could get to more. Um, I bet you all of you do out in Packer Universe, but uh, if you can hit it up, do it. Uh, and we'll be covering, you know, most of training camp here at Packer Universe podcast. So stick around. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, do that. Follow us on socials. You know, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, do that. uh, And we'll be pumping out the content in this preseason. So that's all I got, Ren. Thanks for joining me tonight on this video cast. Absolutely. I had a blast with the day. It was like a a whole work day. We're there nine to five, essentially. And, you know, put our put our Packer time in today. Otherwise, you know, we're normal nine to five working schlubs. And, yeah, we wish we could be the guy you know, yeah. walking down the road for five minutes and taking in all what glorious 16 of those uh, available pub, pub, public. I'm just like Brian there. I can't say public <laughs> apparently uh, practices this year in 2024, but yeah, say until what is it? Episode 280 today. Is that what we're going for? Episode yep. 280 today on the pup list. 